Hello, my soccer universe. Well, um, first of all, I want to really show off all of these shirts that I have back there. So I'm sitting a little bit off center. I hope that no one minds. And second, I shot already this wonderful video explaining all the drawing procedure and so on with Nations League playoff draw and all those kind of things. Not realizing that on Friday, they already had to draw a week ahead of the actual Euro 2020 draw. Uh, so I kind of made a good portion of the video obsolete and at first I was like, eh, that's not good, shall I just post it anyway? And then I said, no, this is an action opportunity to really show how messed up this draw. Messed up is maybe, yeah, from a regular draw it is because there are so many factors to consider. And we will also see that UEFA did actually do a good thing there um, to enable us to have a full draw um, come Friday the 30th of November. We're in Portugal putting all the qualified teams jersey that I have except the ones that are in the laundry. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a makeshift video, but yeah, that's, uh, we gotta fly with that. Let's walk through it. Um, I have all the graphics prepared, so let's see how it will go. I think the best way to do it is to have a mock draw. Uh, but first we're gonna go, what's the situation, how the pots were determined, how the playoffs are determined. Then we'll go through a mock draw and see what are the difficulties and why is it so messed up uh, to actually gauge this a little bit. So let's dive right in. Here's how the groups ended. And of course, we know that the top two always qualified. So we have England, Czech Republic from Group A, from Group B, Ukraine and Portugal, from Group C, Germany and the Netherlands, Group D, Switzerland and Denmark, Group E, Croatia and Wales, Group F, Spain and Sweden, Group G, Poland and Austria, Group H, France and Turkey, Group I, Belgium and Russia, and Group J, Italy and Finland. And if you followed uh, the qualifying, you also know that, uh, that most of the groups were decided well ahead of the first match day, which kind of shows us uh, this that, you know, there are better teams. Uh, there's a little bit of a slope. Now, in order to determine the pots, I already have marked the last place teams from groups F to J, um, kind of with red and grayed them out because we need to get rid of them uh, to have 10 five team groups. So they will not count when we want to determine the pots. And so we get the following pots. Uh, again, we sort the first place teams from strongest to uh, from most points. To least points and then assign them in the order. So the strongest team was Belgium with 24 points plus 24, followed by Italy 24 points plus 22. So those are the two in, in uh, pot one. Then also England goes in there, Germany, Spain and Ukraine. France as a group winner is only the fifth best uh, group winner, uh, seventh best, sorry. Uh, they go uh, in pot two together with Poland, Switzerland and Croatia. And then there are two spots left for uh, second place teams and that will be the Netherlands and Russia. Those are the two best placed Netherlands, uh, second place teams. Pot 3 is then rounded out by Portugal, Turkey, Denmark, Austria, Sweden and the Czechs. And then Wales and Finland are the two that have to go in pot 4. The four spots in pot 4 are then determined by the four playoff uh, winners and for that Let's look at how the playoff was determined. So, go back to, here's the Nations League standing from last year. I already grayed out all the teams that have qualified and I put them on the right side. So you see them uh, there by the group, who is first, who is second. And now we have here the four playoffs. I've done similar graphics before. Now I'm doing it actually right uh, so far. So the first step that we have to do is we have to take all the group winners and assign them to their league. So um, that is the easy part. We don't have a uh, group winner in League A, we have one in League B, we have three in League C, and we have four in League D. And so they are assigned as follows. In League D, we have the playoff already fully assigned. And note how I assign them D1, let's say is Georgia, which is the one that won League D. Then D2 is Northern Macedonia. 
who plays then against Kosovo in uh, D3 and Belarus is the uh, in D4 plays against Georgia. Yeah. So at a next step, uh, we have to then fill in the if it's possible, if, if it has no spillover, we have to fill in the remaining uh, slots. So uh, in League A, there's only one team. So we put Iceland in spot A1. That is easy. In League B, we have three teams uh, left. And fortunately, we have only three teams, um, three slots open in the League B playoff, which also makes it easy. So we can just put Slovakia in B2, Ireland in B3, uh, and Northern Ireland in B4. For League C, uh, we have many teams open, but we have only four slots remaining, and that's in two different leagues. What I initially thought is that then the best place team, which is Bulgaria, will go into the League C, and the next three go in the League A playoff. No, UEFA decided to make a draw there and draw the team that goes into the uh, League C playoff and then uh, put the others in the order they are from the Nations League in the League A playoff. And the team that got drawn in the League C playoff is Israel. Scotland and Israel played already in the Nations League group against each other. So we get the following playoffs in the League A with Iceland play Romania and in um, and Bulgaria at home to Hungary and Scotland is playing Israel Norway against Serbia. Now it would be now easy to say that uh, the A1 teams A1, B1, C1, D1 would have a home field advantage throughout the playoffs However, I do somewhat understand that UEFA says, yeah, let's draw who has the home field advantage because um, they the ranking of the top four teams or whatever is always determined by their placement within the group. They actually didn't play against each other. So let's draw it. I disagree though with League A when there's League C teams in there because I would have given Iceland the home field advantage right away. But the draw now decided that in League A, the win of Bulgaria Hungary will have a home game, so a huge boost for Bulgaria. I'm personally not unhappy about that. In League B, we do it as I would have done it, uh, that Bosnia would have two home games, but if Bosnia loses, Northern Ireland will have the home game. Uh, in League C, Scotland will not get two home games. No, it's Norway who would get two home games if they can beat Serbia. In League D, it is as expected. So this is where the playoffs are and where it has been decided. Um, and now we can move on to the draw and see how the playoffs also have now a big effect on the draw already. But uh, before that, let's fill in the pots. And here we have playoff path A, B and C and D rounding out the pots. And now uh, as a next step, if for the draw, we need to mark who is having a home field advantage. And also strike out all the teams that are not in the playoff anymore. And so we see England, Germany, the Netherlands, uh, Denmark have home field advantage and are qualified, similar for Spain, Russia, and Italy. Ireland is in the playoff, can qualify. Hungary is in the playoff, can qualify. Azerbaijan is already out. So that's uh, one home team that will not be able to qualify. Uh, one host nation that will not be able to qualify. Romania, though, will make it. Um, will make it into the playoffs. Scotland will make it in the playoffs. And that rounds out all the home nations. So uh, the qualified ones, I gave a little bit of darker uh, blue tone in the pots. And where there's potentially a home team in there, I made a lighter shade of blue in there. And with that, let's see, here are the six groups. I also put the playoff paths on there to make a little bit more uh, clear. So we have Group A in Rome and Baku, Group B in St. Petersburg and Copenhagen. We see already two qualified teams there. Then Group C, Amsterdam and Bucharest, Group D, London and Glasgow, Group E, Bilbao and Dublin, and Group F, Munich and Budapest. And for Group C to F potentially have a second host nation. Okay. How are we gonna make sure now that each uh, qualified host nation actually plays at least two games at home? Well, let's do the easy ones first from pots one to three. We assign the teams to their respective pots, uh, to their respective groups. So Italy goes in group A, will play three games at home in Rome. Um, Russia and Denmark go to Group B and also draws held yesterday. Denmark will host Russia in their home game in Copenhagen 
And Russia will play only two games at home. In Group C, we have the Netherlands. In Group D, we have England. In Group E, we have Spain. In Group F, we have Germany. And now comes the messy part. We need to assign the playoff paths, of course, also to their respective um, uh, slots, which is easy for path B and path C. In path B, we have only Ireland in there, so the winner of path B will go into group E. Um, for path D, also we have Scotland in there, so whoever comes out of path C will play in group D. Now the messy part comes that uh, playoff path A has two host nations in there and D doesn't have a single one in there, which initially would have been easy, but um, was not that easy because Kosovo is in playoff path D and Kosovo cannot play Russia and cannot play Ukraine for political reasons. So therefore UEFA said, okay, we need playoff path A to be either group C and group F and let's pair it with uh, playoff path D. So, and in such a way that the playoff path D in principle goes into group C, unless Romania qualifies. Then Romania will play in group C. And in group F, the playoff uh, path winner of uh, A plays in group F, except Kosovo comes out. So uh, that kind of separates it. So uh, basically Romania takes the spot um, of Kosovo in the D playoff and the other way around. So uh, then it's clear. I do, I'm not 100%, I read conflicting things about the Kosovo situation. It's, I know for sure that Romania goes, um, is the only playoff A team that can go in group C. I'm not so sure that, um, in any other case, I think all the other League D nations, if Romania qual qualifies, all the other League D nations can go, uh, go uh, in uh, Group F, I think, as well. But I think to make it a little bit more beautiful here in the uh, graphics, I left it like that. I think I'm pretty sure Kosovo cannot play in Group C, because as we'll see, there will be Ukraine in there, which is another uh, messed up thing. But yeah, Romania for sure. Um, if Romania qualifies and then the, uh, the other League D winner has to go, of course, in Group F. So yes, this is going to happen that way. But I kept it for now uh, this way to keep it. So, so it's the playoff winner of D would go in principle in Group C unless Romania qualifies from Path A, then they go in Group F. Um, any other playoff winner, a path winner of Group A would play uh, of path A would play in group F. <sighs> that was the most complicated thing and I hope I didn't make it even more complicated. Let's start a mock draw uh, with all this. And in the mock draw I did a random assignment. The first team out is Belgium. And now Belgium in principle could play against anyone. However, we know already that Ukraine cannot play Russia. So there's only one slot left for Belgium the one in the Russia group. So uh, Belgium, Russia, Denmark will play in group B. Now Ukraine then of course has group C and we have the first pot filled. That was not much of a draw, you agree with me. Now with that let's move to pot 2 and the first team out there is Poland, can go in all four remaining groups A, D, E, F and since it's the first out we'll put it with Italy. Next one is France, has all slots open, can go to England. Then we have Croatia, goes with Spain, and Switzerland goes with Germany. Again, all randomly done. Although I have to say the draw uh, randomly turned out quite nice uh, for my liking. <laughs> uh, then let's go to uh, pot three and the nuclear option pot three, uh, it, the nuclear option out of pot two I think is France because that will always cause a big name matchup wherever France goes and then if Portugal would go in the same group uh, that would cause an immediate group of death almost. But yeah, Portugal is the first team chosen here and they will go in group A and Italy, Poland, Portugal sounds familiar. Yes, they played in uh, the Nations League against each other, the three of them. So I think I find this a very nice uh, group here. Then we have the Czechs next. 
they go in Group C, the Netherlands and the Czechs. That was, they have a long history also. Then Sweden goes with England, France. Uh, that was a Euro 2012 uh, group among those three. Ukraine was also in the group. Turkey goes in Group E. That was the last Euro, Spain, Croatia, Turkey. And Austria goes in Group F. Uh, there's not much uh, soccer relationships there. However, those three nations together and then playing in Munich and Budapest, geographically, it's a slam dunk. I actually would say this is almost my dream draw at Hungary or whoever comes out of uh, the playoffs there would be a really, really, really uh, nice group for Austria. I would be very happy with this one, I gotta say. This is almost uh, pretty close to my dream draw. Then, we have only two slots left. Wales is the first one out, goes in Group A, and this would be a pretty strong group, pretty even group, and Finland goes in Group B. And that ends my mock draw. You see, it is quite complicated. However, I hope you see kind of uh, the difficulties that are in there. Again, once again, uh, the playoff paths C and B, it's pretty clear where they go. Playoff path A and D are the complicated ones. If playoff path A gives us Romania, Romania will play in League C, and then the playoff path winner of D plays in Group F. If out of playoff uh, path A, Romania does not come out, then uh, that winner plays in Group F, and the D winner will play in League C. That's roughly like how it will happen. Uh, again, I read that Ukraine and Kosovo cannot play against each other, and I think that is the nuclear option that might trigger a second draw. But let's see about that. I think if it, um, yeah, we uh, that that is really the only option. But playoff paths A and D are paired, and they might make it difficult. But I hope it made it all clearer. Let me know what you think about the draw. Let me know your dream draw. I would be very interested in that. There's another thing that might happen is that teams qualify in the second round and they might not they be politically matched. So I'm not sure what will happen there or that Ukraine might have to play in St. Petersburg. Although when I looked at the schedule, it might not happen that way. So. Lots of things to be decided. This is the most complicated Euros of all time, but the games will be played and it will happen some way or another. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.